given the, uh, that our Congress has imposed the uh, No Child Gets Ahead law, given that our state legislature uh, has imposed MCAS, given that money goes out of the school committee's hands and into charter schools, um, and given, finally, that uh, our testing versus other nations uh, is sliding downward, not upward. Um, my question is, what is Newburyport going to do to reverse that trend here? Um, and to me, I see uh, the, the uh, public school system in deep trouble. And it's getting worse. Uh, and there are going to be a lot of fine people who don't get an education that they could have been given. Um, and so what, what are we going to do about that? That's my question. So, Alex. Um, so you're talking about our Talk more about how the system is getting worse. So our system is getting worse. Can you talk more about that? Well, um, the, my experience is more with Triton than it is with Newburyport, although I have Newburyport children that I work with on a regular weekly basis. Um, and my field is mathematics and not German or some other thing. That, uh, so. I, I see kids who uh, are, are woefully, inadequately trained uh, in mathematics. Um, and so I'm, I'm very concerned. Uh, I, I see mathematics as a, as a big door opener or big door shutter, either way you want to look at it. Uh, and uh, I, I just, uh, I came to the STEM conference, I only got to the second of the three, and listened to the was, was it head of the department? Or, uh, former head of the department put up uh, a spread of courses and it struck me that, that uh, it didn't sound as if anything was going on below the high school uh, to take the, uh, to make the high school uh, mathematics program uh, sound like uh, something uh, that had been rethought uh, in 50 years. And that concerns me. Uh, my, my grandson is seven. Uh, I, I don't care how good his education is or how smart he is, if the population around him isn't well educated and trained, he's in deep trouble. And, and for me, that's a very sad state of affairs. So, you, so uh, you asked a very important question, which was, you know, what are we doing about it? Right. What do you so we know that, um, you know, what our our teachers are expected to implement the new um, uh, Common Core curriculum. Uh, we started uh, our uh, a new um, math initiative in kindergarten and first grade. Kindergarten through two. I'm sorry? K through two. K through two. Mm -hmm. so we know that is happening. We, and Ange, certainly Angela can speak much more to all this than me. Um, we've had all of our teachers in grades three through um, five, all of our teachers, go through five days of math training with um, Dr. Andrew Chen out of MIT. Our math teachers in, in our middle school did the same. Uh, recently, oh, our high school teachers, teachers too, too. Uh, our special education were involved as well, and our high school teachers just recently spent a day, or half a day, okay. uh, day you know, with Andrew. So, the professional development is there. Um, one of the uh, most compelling things I think is going to happen, I think in this district and in all these districts across the state, all of our teachers will be going through a new um, evaluation system. Uh, a lot of it's tied to assessment, uh, a lot of it's tied to data-driven uh, information. Not only is our teachers uh, responsible for our assessment, but our, our principals as well. 
as well as superintendent. So we all are very uh, invested in how our students perform, more than ever before. Uh, Angel? Well, and just one other thing. Um, I wanted to add to that. I, I agree with everything you said, Dr. Kerbel. But, you know, when we look at international testing scores, too, you know, most frequently, particularly for math, we look at the TIMS report. And interesting, interestingly enough is if you break Massachusetts out of the statistics for the United States, Massachusetts is very competitive, very competitive. So, you know, I know when we look at our country as a whole, I agree, we, you know, we are in trouble. And yet some of the strides that Massachusetts is making is, is proving we're moving in the right direction. Because we see when you break Massachusetts out, you know, um, we're in top 10. Yeah. So I think I agree with you. I think, you know, our work has to be ongoing. We have to always be pushing mathematical thinking. It always has to come to the next level. It's more than computation. You know, it's, it's a three-pronged stool, as Dr. Chen always says. You know, it's a three-legged stool. We've got to um, look at skills, computation, and problem solving. And they need to be a whole. And we always have to approach math that way. I know that you believe that, I, I, we, you and I have talked. So, but you know, it's gotta be, it's gotta be continuous improvement. It has, we've always gotta be working to strive to that next level. What are, what, Angela, what would you say are some of the next steps? Well, I think one of the things that we're really focusing on doing um, is drilling down into the, to the Common Core. Because, you know, you look at the Common Core on surface and um, people can say, oh yeah, you know, we're doing that, or we're close to that, or we're getting close to that. But when you really drill down into the depth of what those standards are intended to be, um, we're not quite there yet. And so um, we're going to do some of that work with the teachers. We are going to help them better understand beyond the essence of the standard, to really understand the core of that standard. Um, we're going, we're, I'm working with directors from several other districts to decide exactly how we might want to approach that work. Um, we met with um, Dr. Chen last week again and we were talking about the next step which would be a graduate level course. Getting the other districts in the region, region in par where we are because we did the training um, last year into this year. Amesbury took our lead and did it this year. And now um, Triton, Georgetown, and um, No Shore Regional are going to do it during the school year, the first half of next year. And then as we look at the second half of the year, um, we're looking at a graduate level course that takes things even to a higher level for all the teachers who have had the foundation now and um, can get to that next step. So those are some of the things we're driving out. Um, you know, um, Zab and I have talked about another uh, professional development opportunity for our teachers of really primary grades to, to uh, do some work around using Cuisinaire rods and really help the kids understand a deeper, have, develop a deeper understanding of number sense through manipulatives and um, how that all plays into building the foundation for where they go. The words of I think some of the work that's been done by the data teams mm -hmm. is showing uh, you know, some very interesting uh, results as well as the work that has to be done. Uh, and I think that uh, I'm very, very hopeful about the, uh, the MCAS test that starts this week in mathematics. MCAS and as well as the, um, you know, our teachers have been working in small professional learning communities uh, during our half days. And they're um, developing common assessments. They're analyzing those common assessments together. And they're using that information to make better decisions about where they go with instruction. So that, I think, is really exciting. That's some of the work that's not only coming out of our data teams, but it's coming out of our best practices that teachers are developing. And that's not just at the high school level. You know, that starts early on. Um, we just had a... Um, leadership meeting, last, was it just last week, Mark? It was, I think it was just last week, and um, the teachers, the teacher leaders involved in that <coughs> were all putting forth their proposals for how they want to move their professional learning community.
communities that they're working with and what kind of ideas they have around that. And um, a lot of that work was to, the proposals were to dig deeper, to spend time over the summer when uh, they could pull smaller groups of people together, do some reflection, develop some proposals, and put it forward to a large group come fall. So a lot of good thinking and work going on. I think one of the things we take for, for granted is that kids know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide with one of the Can I interrupt just for one minute? We do have a guest. Right. Just and I was, I'm looking, down, I'm looking. We're down to four minutes. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, thanks. No, I just came because, and I'm sure it wasn't a diabolical motivation, but on your agenda for tonight's comment comes after your review of the school calendar. And um, I read about the proposals. I emailed everyone, but I just wanted to urge you to include the parent community in that if you're going to make significant changes because that's where the impact is. And um, it's not, and this hasn't been widely disseminated in the parent community, and I know you emailed me back and you've got other proposals or other propositions on the table, but I just wanted to remind you that delayed openings for elementary parents are like my initial reaction, and I know it's not. This wasn't what you were thinking. This thing of my thought the school committee's declaring war on working moms. Delayed openings, but there's no child care, and there's no, there's no, there's nothing in place. Oh, okay. Never so many emails. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I still, I mean, a lot of people still don't know. Yeah. You know, haven't don't know that that was still on the table. Anyway, that's. I would have come for. I would have stayed for. I mean, I will stay, but the comments came after. Sorry. Anyway. Yeah, we want to switch that around. Mm -hmm. Well, I, we always have two. Um, oh, I did. I mean, I just read the agenda. Wow. Well, I mean, you can always suggest. Yeah. I mean, I know you're not usually. Agenda. You can adjust the agenda. Uh, why should the comments come before the table shows up? <laughs> I think. I mean, I think we got to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, and I know, it's, and I just, just from what I read, I wasn't at last one. I think it was the high school principal, not the teacher. But there weren't any parents weighing in on that. Public comment would be the changed. Last year, that was the directive that we actually gave the second time. We need to get some discipline. <laughs> very, very full of the So that's why it's not only one last year. I just make one, one quick comment, which I think goes to, to some of the a, a, a number of times when I heard the discussion about where we're going with mathematics, and there's just a term that I, I, I find absent from our vocabulary right now as we're talking about it, and I'd like to see if we can bring it in. That's mastery. Uh, we're talking a lot about what they're going to be doing, what's included, and what we're going to play with. What does mastery look like for mathematics at the third grade? That means that they have the confidence to go on and embrace and surpass our expectations in the fourth grade. And that's, that's a concept that, uh, as we've gone through, I think we ought to think about as it applies to all our curriculum areas, whether it be science, and, uh, because that's really what it comes down to. Are we, we're not exposing our kids to stuff. We need to help them master the stuff. And so we need to bring that back into our conversation and as part of our, our process of thought, I think. And, it, and you know, Nick, if I can speak to that, it is a part of the process of thought. That's all part of the discussion sequence that we put together as we map our curriculum. Um, we actually have expectations set for where we expect children to be. You know, this is great by the end. You know, they're kind of like exit outcomes. Mm -hmm. But there are also learning benchmarks along the way that are developed as well. But I'm glad you brought that up. We should say that part. Uh, so I think that we should. We are doing that. So, I know. Yeah. I know that it's part of that, that process. Mm -hmm. But I think when we get, as the teachers are really working hard and they're meeting and they're doing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. let's talk about what the end results of all of that activity might be. And I think we'll have a clearer picture of where we're going if we do that. Yeah. 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 You know, you know, you know, you know, I was saying about there's an assumption that our kids know how to as fact multiply and divide the bottom of We need to have those skills right, and be able to apply those. Very challenging to be trying to apply something when you're having problems. Uh, when you haven't mastered how to add subtract multiply and divide. Right? 
I see uh, that going on more this year than last year. An attempt to make sure that our kids know how to do the kinds of things we expect them to do by the time they're in second grade, third grade, and fourth grade. After that, it becomes a challenge. We're going to have to end now. Thank you very much. I'd like to call the school committee meeting uh, for Monday, May 7th, 2012, um, in session. Could we have a roll call, please, Mrs. Um, Kennedy? Mr. Menon? Here. Mr. Cole? Here. Ms. Sweeney? Here. Mayor Holliday? Present. Mr. DeCanta? Present. Ms. McCarthy? Here. Mr. Keel? Here. All present. Thank you. Will you stand for the pledge, please? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation one God, and God, indivisible, and the basis of justice for all. I'd like to read our mission statement. The Newburyport Public Schools are committed to the intellectual, physical, social development, and the engagement of every student. Within a culture of high expectations for individual and group, group learning, our students experience rigorous academic challenge, are intellectually curious, and express themselves creatively. Our students enhance their well-being by applying knowledge and skills about nutrition, fitness, and health behaviors. Our schools are an inclusive and supportive community. As part of this community, our students demonstrate values of personal integrity, sensitivity, and social responsibility. Our schools partner with parents and community in significant ways for blessing to help achieve this mission. Members of our school community, teachers, parents, staff, and administration support this mission every day, in every classroom, on every field of play, and in every activity. Um, Mr. Keon, do we have yes. a consent agenda for this evening? Yes, we have two warrants. I move that the following name bills of the new report public schools amounting in the aggregate to $65,350.50 be approved and forwarded to the city audit for payment. For payment. There are no conflicts. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have an additional one. I move that the following name bills of the Newburyport Public Schools amounting in the aggregate to $213,583.51 be approved and forwarded to the City Auditor for payment. Again, there are no costs. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now I'm going to um, call your attention to the minutes. We have two separate sets of minutes from last uh, time we met. Uh, we have minutes from the public hearing session of Tuesday, April 24th. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes carry. <coughs> I would like to call your attention to the second set of minutes for the regular school committee meeting of Tuesday, October 24th, 2012. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Discussion. No. That's okay. <laughs> Motion carry. Minutes carry. And now we come to our delightful portion of our evening. All right. So, Alex Bradley. Okay. Uh, so I have two items of note tonight. First of all, eight contests starting today. Um, so everybody's still no. Um, <laughs> they're generally three hour long tests starting at either 8 or 12. Hell, either uh, in one of the back rooms at the public library uh, or in the gym for some of the larger public um, Or larger tests for larger people. No. Oh my goodness. Uh, tests of the higher amount of people in them usually go in the gym. And tests with the smaller amount of people go in the library. Um, and also, May 18th is the last day for seniors um, before senior finals and senior week and graduation. And I've realized the other day that this is a, the last school committee meeting before them. So uh, therefore, it is the last school committee meeting where I am qualified to represent the student body. 
Um, so my other motive for tonight is to introduce you to Julia Bradley, um, who will be my replacement. Um, I know her pretty well. She's my sister. <laughs> uh, I can personally attest that she will do a great job. The Student Advisory Council voted unanimously to put her in this job. Um, and I have nothing but confidence that she will do So thank you. I, and the other thing, early in the school committee process, uh, when I was first learning how to give uh, reports, I guess, uh, one of you, I can't remember who, uh, remarked that this part of city government was unique in the sense that the people it most directly affects, uh, the students, uh, are the people who don't vote for them. Right? There, there's no voting involved for the students. It's an insight of the And with, with this job, I, I really appreciate you giving the students a voice. Um, and it's something I will always remember. You've done a really nice job representing the student body and being our representative. You've got big shoes to fill. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I would just like to thank you. Don't worry, I'll probably be around if I bring it back from college. <laughs> and I work for mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, you I wait, do you have to wait in this part. Oh, uh, I finished your college degree first. Exactly. Uh, I do actually have to, uh, to go tonight uh, early. Uh, I you got to go study for your AP or go get some rest. Exactly. So which one are you taking? Uh, I'm doing AP Lit, AP Stats, and AP Government. Wow. Good luck. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting one. All right. Good night. Thank you all very much. Alex, Julie. Thank you. Julie, welcome. Oh, welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. We're going to move on now, but we've had a request to change public comment um, to have it before we discuss the school calendar review. So now I would like to open up a um, session of public comment. The next item on our agenda is public comment. It is an opportunity for anyone to be heard by this school committee. Public comment is not conversational, but rather an opportunity for you to make a statement. If you wish to provide a comment, please raise your hand to be recognized. Join us at the table and begin by stating your name and address. Please try to keep your statements to two minutes. Do we have any public comment at this time? Okay. Um, I'd like to move on now to uh, the topic of the New Report School calendar for next year, and I'm going to turn this session over to Dr. Kerbel. Thank you. Um, so what you should have is an updated um, item number six. Background information handout. Everybody, does anyone have this? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 So I want to thank uh, the two parents who served on the committee. Uh, we had a lot of discussion. We spoke um, at length about a lot of things. We spent a lot of time talking about the release dates and the release dates that they 
that currently this year they are on Thursdays. We talked about ways to reconfigure the calendar. And one of the things that um, I did as a request at that time was to poll parents regarding uh, their input regarding having a release day on Thursday or a Friday. And I believe that I included in your in your updated handout the following. Uh, 54 parents like Thursday, that was 8% of the total. 706 uh, responded. On Friday, 610, which was 86. And then there was 42 or 6% that wanted something else. I looked at, uh, we all looked at, the you know, information that uh, parents put in the comment section. And I believe they were a wide and very, um, a lot of people wanted us to combine it half days and to add full professional days instead. Um, the calendar is 180 days for students and 184 contractually for teachers. Adding, uh, you know, uh, taking release days and combining them to make professional days would add to the contract, so that wouldn't work. Um, parents asked us to do away with release days altogether. Um, we are, we have a lot to do in the district. It's a lot of mandated training. Plus, it's just so much to accomplish. We need the release days to accomplish uh, writing curriculum. Uh, teachers getting together in terms of working on common assessments, uh, plus uh, set up by Angela Bick. There's a lot of professional development for our teachers. This year, of all years, we're implementing a new teacher evaluation system. We're working with the committee. The committee will need the time during our release days okay, to implement that new system. Um, Parents talked about they have to be at work early, they have to provide daycare, they have to provide opportunities for our sons and daughters to either go someplace. Um, and so we heard from those, those parents as well. Uh, let's see, on <coughs> April 24th, April 24th, so we, uh, we talked about uh, a finding from uh, the state, which came out on April 17th. On April 17th, we had a finding that, I'm going to read the finding as part of a coordinated program review the civil rights. I want to read uh, the following finding. That a review of documentation indicates that Newport High School does not meet the requirement of 990 hours. And there is a one-year compliance date of April 17, 2013. So we have really two issues that we need to really deal with. Okay, one is the Friday release day, and the second has to do with the civil rights audit. And the, and I want to talk about the Friday release day first. So I'm going to just talk about things from my purple's point of view. I'm the superintendent, but I have, um, by the way, about things that not people that not everyone agrees with. And what I did is I brought a calendar to you and asked you to vote on to accept to have release days on Friday. Okay. And I believe that if the school department sets the expectation for attendance and rigor in classrooms, that that will hold. Some people call me naive. I don't believe I'm naive. I just think that if you set expectations, people will live up to it. Now, a number of things have happened since the school committee voted last January. We had a um, youth risky behavior survey that came out. They told us something that we assumed because the high school principal, who is in the audience, um, was dealing with an awful lot of substance abuse issues 
okay, that didn't manifest itself <coughs> as it has since the first of the year. The Risky Behavior Survey showed that more students are doing the kinds of things we don't want them to do. Also what came out was, is Friday an opportunity for students to start their weekend earlier? It's an opportunity for parents to take students out of the school earlier? <coughs> uh, so what we had to face with was one is uh, several things. Okay. One is absenteeism on, 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 on Fridays when we have release days. Okay. Secondly, opportunities for students to get a head start on their weekend. Okay, and third, we have uh, the downtown area that I'm not quite sure favors release day at all because a lot of students end up in Market Square. So given that, that's one of the release days. The second has to do with the civil rights audit. And one of the things that we looked at uh, since April 24th, we said, well, what does a delay opening look like? Um, and we got kind of excited about that. And then we said, well, let's take a look at what a delayed opening would be like. Okay, and I asked uh, Deirdre, our assistant superintendent, to look at four things, four configurations. One has to do with um, a delayed opening, two hour delayed opening for the high school and three hour delay opening for the elementary uh, schools, okay? Also, we asked, I and also asked Deidre to take a look at the cost for a delay opening of two hours for the high school and two and a half hours um, at the other schools. And then the third option was to look at delay opening and early release. Delay opening for the high school and an early release from the end of the day for our elementary schools. Okay, and the last option was to look at just early release days by the high school students would attend school an hour longer. Okay, so now, delayed opening for elementary school students is it just does not the right match. They ask students to come into school and start school at 12 o'clock, come in and have lunch, okay, and then start their studies. And that doesn't make sense. Okay. Um, it just didn't make sense. So why would we do that? Then we took a look at, and plus there was a cost. And I'm going to ask Deidre, if you don't mind, to talk about the overall cost right, once I get finished with this. Second has to do with um, combining the delay opening with the early release. In other words, happens if high school have a delayed opening, but the elementary students get released. I've heard from parents, and I can't tell you how many parents said, my high school student is the one that takes care of my elementary sign and dog. Okay? And that didn't work out so well. Plus, there was a high cost. <coughs> the early release day for everyone uh, makes sense, and taking a look at starting the high school I um, have have high school students stay longer in school made some sense. We were actually meeting when well, we had a meeting with our central office and principals. We're actually meeting that way, okay? And then we found that if you keep students in school another hour and dismissing them at 12 o'clock rather than 11 o'clock, that's a long time to go without eating since school starts at 7:30. Principal felt that students need to eat lunch, and I'm not quite sure if there's a regulation that they have to eat lunch. Hey, why feed them at all, right? I think we have to, to feed them if we if students go to lunch and they normally go to lunch at 10:30. Okay, if we wouldn't lose, we wouldn't gain the three uh, the nine hours. We'd actually gain only four and a half hours because the time had to be donated to lunch. So. I ended up talking to Karen Brand, the director of um, special education, and I asked her uh, questions regarding the um, program review. And I made a call to Dean Payroll, who's a supervisor, 
of um, the Northeast um, uh, Coordinating Program Review. And, I, and Dean and I go back to my days in Winchester when he, he came out a number of times. So I know him enough to talk to him. And so when I called him, I said, you're asking this district to make a plan over two weeks for a plan that has to be implemented by April 13th, 2013, or April 17th, sorry. And I said, you're giving us a very, very short window to make decisions that, have to be, that don't have to be in place until next April. And I said, and we're not going to make a thoughtful one. We're actually making a reactionary, reactionary one. Okay, so that didn't make sense. Um, Dean thought it didn't make sense either. I said, if you allow us a few extra months, that would give us a year to plan and to be able to, and then implement this thoughtful plan in September 2013. Uh, verbally, he agreed, but he had to speak to his supervisor and has not come back to me. And I thought I, I thought I would have the answer for you uh, by now. So, given that, there are costs associated with these four scenarios. And I'm going to ask Deirdre, if she wouldn't mind, to go over the cost. Um. As you've heard me in the past talk about our transportation system, the costs that Mark's speaking about, Dr. Kerbel is speaking about, are related to transportation costs. And because we've got, for all three scenarios that are involving a delayed opening, we have an additional time where we have a vehicle on the road. In fact, we've got three vehicles on the road with the high school. And basically what happens in our transportation system, we've got three tiers. We use the bus three different times. We go out with high school kids and middle school kids. We come back. We go get elementary school kids. We come back. We go get kindergarten kids, and it's, re it's, it's done for the day. So there are three separate tiers. We get 10 buses on the road that facilitate our transportation. So because we get two hours in the morning for three tiers and two hours in the afternoon for three tiers, if we elongate that, because we've got a delayed opening for an hour, delayed opening for half an hour and or any other variation, we get charged per hour for the additional hour that the bus is in wait time. We're not being charged for the actual bus, but we're being charged for the driver who's waiting to either pick up students or drop students off at home. So for the first option where you see high school two hours, other schools three hours, there's the additional hour. And as Dr. Kerbel has in his updated document for you under number one, this scenario would cost an extra 30 hours per year of that wait time for drivers in order to do a high school two hour delay and all other schools a three hour delay. So 30 hours, your average cost per driver is going to be $25, $30 if they incorporate benefits, which typically they're going to do. So you're looking at $700 to $800 for that particular scenario. Scenario two, where you have a high school at two hours, but the other school is at two and a half hours. Not the full hour, just the half hour. So on an annual basis, that driver is going to be waiting a half hour for those nine half days. There are three drivers, so you're looking at 15 hours in total at $25 per hour. Still four to $600. The third scenario where you have the high school at a delayed opening in all other schools at their regular early release time, such as they have this year, you're going to have a driver in waiting for approximately 56 hours of that um, scenario number three. Again, that times the $25 an hour is a little over $1,500, $1,600. Scenario four was a no cost scenario. And the reason it was a no-cost scenario is during high school testing time, the high school picks up last during high school testing time. So that scenario is already a proven scenario for the high school that happens a few times a year. And the transportation company felt as though they could have the high school go last instead of the high school go first <coughs> on those nine release days. And that's why there would be no additional wait time um, and that they could make that happen at no cost. 
Uh, we met in the superintendent's office, myself, uh, Salter Transportation, a few of their drivers that really know the routes, that really have the time down, that really have the tears down. Uh, we brainstormed for a few hours, came up with a couple of charts, and that's how we made these determinations about the additional hours for the nine and a half days on all of these different four different scenarios. So, um, we met uh, principals and central office administrators, and I met um, to go over the four scenarios and um, talked about a lot of things. And the legal opening, like I said, didn't make sense. Um, the early release day makes sense. Uh, given the fact that the, the um, state is probably going to give us a few extra months to accomplish our goal to address a 990 by September 1st, um, I, I'm, I'm going to take you to the recommendation page where I'm going to recommend that a number of things. One, that either you remain with the currently approved calendar and the early release dates which appear on Fridays, or vote the 2012-2013 calendar to schedule early release days on Thursdays, which is what we have right now. Um, one of the things I, I do want to let you know that um, I met with Andy Egmont, Chris Powers, to talk about uh, uh, services for, for parents who need daycare or any other services. Uh, and that Andy said that new services will do whatever they can with the YWCA uh, to help out. What I learned was that usually on uh, current release days, attendance at the uh, WYC, w, I'm sorry, the YWCA and new services program tended to uh, go down on release days. Okay, so um, given that, Probably should uh, open us up to any questions. Um, the principal of the high school is here. He can answer um, questions if you need me. Um, certainly for Mike, uh, if we had the late opening, students would have lunch on the delayed openings. And I think, am I right to say that we would lose some hours, we wouldn't gain the nine hours because kids would have to be in a lunch. Right, lunch okay. doesn't count, so instead of the three hours being instructional, right. it would incorporate lunch as well as some instructional. And, right. and the lunches would be in the same current schedule? Is that correct? Yes. The first one at 10.30 or something? Yeah. With the delayed opening. Mr. Mann. Yeah, I don't know if this is for um, for Mike or for uh, Dr. Kerbel. When I, when I was in college, we had these these things called brown bag seminars. And essentially, we would bring our lunch and there would be some sort of presentation or some sort of conversation. I, I'm, I'm, I'm offering that as maybe one way to think about capturing some of that time that we might be losing as a result of lunch. That, that one day um, a month, if it's possible to think about having a directed conversation over lunch in the classroom with the teachers, um, which might accomplish both of those things that we need to do. Um, it was it was really it was quite effective, and you, know, you could you know plan in advance what the topic might be. It might be students making presentations, but it might be a way to capture some of that, that additional time. Yes, Mike. Sure, Mr. Harris, would you join us? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Just, just for clarity, for, mm -hmm. for me, I guess, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to look at these, um, the actions recommended. And am I to assume, maybe this is a question for you, Dr. Kerbel, that um, in both of these scenarios, um, the high school would have two hours <coughs> of professional development? 
in both of these scenarios, if, if we stuck with the Friday or we went with the Thursday, are we talking about the fact that the high school would have two hours of, of professional development and all the other levels have three? Um, yes. Yes. You may be talking about two different things, okay? So maybe the question would ask is when do students get dismissed? Okay. Um, in either one of these scenarios, mm -hmm. and then I'm, now I'm going to go back to this. Are you on scenario four? Well, I'm, out on, I'm on the superintendent's two recommendations to the committee. Do you have that? I do. We assume that's draft three and four. Yes. Dr. Oh, sorry. Well, no, I mean, I just want to confirm what they Which is three, which is four. Yes. Three is Thursday, four is Friday. So, in either one of these calendars, are we talking about keeping the high school kids in school for an hour more? Yes, we are. And because we have to serve them lunches, how much time are we gaining toward 990? If, if there's a couple scenarios that can play out. I've been working with a teacher who I trust as far as numbers are concerned more than I trust myself because I'm a social studies background, not a math background. Um, you know, we could go to 12. Um, the other scenario that we started talking about on Friday, and I know this disrupts a lot of plans, but our last lunch gets out of 12:17. So if we went to 12:17, we can keep, as Steve just asked before, we can keep the regular lunch schedule that we normally do, and that would give students a lunch and would also give teachers their lunch, so that at 12:17 we would be done for the day, give teachers a couple minutes, and we could still start our professional development at 12.30, go 12.30 to 2.30, still get the two hours in. So that's a scenario, I don't know what that does with the bus schedule because it's 17 minutes later. You know, it, the, the way it basically comes out is, is that if, if, if we go to a two hour high school early release as opposed to three, we're really gonna gain about six and three quarter hours um, in that scenario, roughly, give or take a few minutes. And if we add a half hour per exam for preparation before the exam, we would add another six and a half hours. So we would add a total of a little over 13 hours. And we would be for, again, a third of the students, we'd be at 1,050. For two thirds of the students, we'd be at 983. I'm also re-looking at that number because when we were analyzing it just this afternoon, when I asked for the data from the technology, I asked for study halls. I didn't know if I took into consideration students who have academic support, and those hours count. So these, num these percentages may be higher. I've got to sit with Judy tomorrow mm -hmm. and rework the numbers and see are, are these percentages on the low side. And there's a possibility that they may be. Um, you know, th there, are, there are other options that are out there, but to do this for September would be, in my view, almost impossible. We're, we're rolling the students into the schedule tomorrow. We've already set our parameters and our rules. I mean, there's an easy solution to this, easy in one sense, by saying students don't have a study hall. But that also brings up a myriad of questions. You know, are we ready as a school to do that? I personally don't think so. Uh, that's my own take on things. I think we weathered the homework issue when we changed the schedule. We're better in a better place than we were two years ago. However, I think there still needs to be work in that in that area. I think that would that would not vote our students well because some students now do use the study hall time advantageously as opposed to before when many of our students had 90 minutes a day or as some students had 180 minutes a day of study hall, there wasn't a lot of 
it, you know, there wasn't really the concept of homework, it was the concept of study hall work. Mm -hmm. Now that's kind of flipped, but I think, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to act rashly as far as the, the, the no study halls and take something that's needed by our students away to meet 990. Um, you know, for us to make a wholesale change right now in what we're doing with three people who are doing the schedule who have never done it before, um, and who are, you know, walking on eggshells, hoping that, you know, we get this done by, by June, um, that would not be in anyone's best interest to do that for September. So we could gain back, you know, 13 hours and show the state that we're moving in that direction. And then work out some plan for the following school year that gets us there. I mean, I gotta go back to two years ago. I mean, if you look at the chart that that Deirdre did, if you add the hours up, you know, teachers in every building are working six hours and 30 minutes of straight instructional, start of the day, end of the day, not counting before and after, not going to go there. If you look at the high school, it's six hours and 55 minutes. So high school teachers extended their day 25 minutes a day for 180 days two years ago. Um, when we made the schedule change. And, you know, now we're, we're, we're taking a little bit away from every early release day, and now I'm adding more time to their exam days where they're scrambling to get all their exams graded because my teachers, when they do their, their exams, it's not just a quick, you know, 50 question multiple choice. There, there are short answers and essays that they, they have to read, and I need to give them half the time to get that done either in the middle of the school year when they're prepping for possibly uh, new half year courses that will be starting the following Monday, or at the end of the school year when it's a mad scramble to get everything done, you know, in the throes of getting out of here in June. So, you know, I, I, I want to tread lightly as, as much as possible and, and really have some time to try to, you know, I think we can do some things in the short term that gets us very close, and again, I'm going to be working uh, over the next two days to look at these total number of students. That those, those percentages may change. We may, be, we may have more students in compliance than what I reported out. And I've got to look into that scenario. Mike, um, what came up earlier was a conversation, um, a conversation I had with a school committee member about internship hours. They, those hours count? Yes, they do. So students who are doing an internship, those hours will count towards the 990. And I have students that are doing a variety of different internships, both internally here at the high school with the bank, also externally. I've got a student that goes down to the Knox School. So I've got students who do uh, still, even though it's a rotating schedule, still do their um, the city hall. There's a student that works at the city hall. Okay, so you know there are still students doing that, uh, and that those hours do count, and we count those hours. We we, you know, if a student has an internship, it's a, it, we consider that a class. So I'm sure those students were counted in the total number of students. If they don't have a study hall, that they're taking the full load. I just have a question about the internship. So if a student's doing an internship at at a elementary school on the day that that time frame would be at 7 30 in the morning when that elementary school is not open what does that time fall into does that fall into a study hall time or is that cons still considered an that's still considered internship because usually they're giving something to do on on the days that they that they don't they can't meet because of the schedule and i know the city hall student and the uh, student going to the um, one to do the, to Bresnahan. Um, there are days in a cycle, one day out of the seven, that the school isn't open. So they're they're given through Cheryl Zeno, they're given another body of work to do. There are all kinds of things that go along with the inter internship besides just being at the site. There there are reflections, there are things that a student can work on. But they come to the high school? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Cantor? Um, you told me that I, I don't see it here. According to the audit, uh, how short are we in the 990? What do you say? Oh. 
with 32% of our students are at 1,047 hours. They are scheduled for 1,074. We take it 27 hours away on early release days and color day, and we're down to 1,047. So they are 57 hours above the state standard. Two thirds of our students are scheduled for 997 hours. You take away the 27 hours for early release and color day, and they're, they're at 970. They're 20 hours short. So that's why if, if we add the participatory time for each exam, 13 exams out of the 14 days, because one would be a study hall with no exam, that gives you six and a half hours. And if you add the time to a elongated early release date at the high school, you gain back another six and three quarters. So you'd, you'd be at 983 in some minutes. So you'd be roughly six hours short. Now, there's also another easy way to solve that, but again, I, I wouldn't look at that at, as to next year. I mean, we just spent 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock this afternoon, uh, several of us around the table looking at the rollout of the new evaluation system and what that's going to take and the time that teachers are going to need and administrators are going to need to get that off and running in the best possible way for everybody. Um, you know, if we went to seven early release days <clears throat> instead of what we have now, plus the exams, plus the um, early release added in an hour, you'd be at 990 and you'd actually be 20 something minutes over. <coughs> But I don't think that's a feasible option in my view for next year because with high school having a NEASC study that needs to be completed and in the hands of the NEASC visiting team, which is coming in October of 2013, and the rollout of the new evaluation system and all of the um, new formats and, and the new responsibilities on everyone's plate, I think by Next year's that would not be the, the right time, in my view, to decrease early release days because our teachers, our administrators, we're going to need that, especially at the high school, not minimizing the other schools. But I have a, I have a NEAS visit coming up in 2013. We've got to have our ducks in a row and our reports done um, by late May to get that to the NEAS site visit uh, coordinator so that they can prep and be ready to come here in October of 2013. So, you know, there's a lot of things that we're juggling at this time, and, and you know, I don't want to throw a monkey wrench into the, into the whole mix here, um, but we can add some time for next year and show good faith that, that we're getting there. Remember where we were three years ago. Most of our students were at 818 hours. Mr. Kim? Okay. Um, it, it is interesting that you brought up seven days because that was kind of the way I looked at it too. You may need to drop three early releases. And it, 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 what it boils down to is we're trying to contractually meet the contracts of the teachers, but we're not giving them enough time in their contract to meet 990. It's pretty simple. Um, and, and what's even more apparent is the early release days is, is, is exactly where we're losing all the time. Although, as you say, we need the early release days. But we need them for staff development. However, staff development isn't a civil rights violation. Not meeting 990 is a civil rights violation. All right? Yeah, but we, we also have to qualify that. I mean, I, I've been, we've been very upfront with the 990 number since this whole, you know, since I've been here. And I was told by the previous superintendent that that was the number one thing on my plate over the first two years that I was here was to, was to address the finding of the previous civil rights audit that we had. Correct? Right? I'm looking at it now, but I'm And, sure. you know, we, we've done this with, I think, integrity and fidelity as far as, and I'll use those words because my, my, the Patriots know where that comes from, so I'll say it with a smile. Okay, that you know we, we have we have accounted for every single minute. I can tell you that there are high schools in the area that say they're meeting 990, wink wink, with you know studies that are not directed studies. 
there's a school in the area that doesn't count passing time. That's how they meet 990. There, you know, there, there are schools that, that, that say they meet it, but when you break it down, they don't. You know, we, be, we would be very close next year to meet it. And given another year, to me, would, would, would make better sense than blowing everything up in May for a September start. That's just my, that's my editorial for the meeting. Mr. Yeah, I had a question for Mr. Parent, but I also just wanted to respond um, to, to Mr. Keown. As somebody who's been involved right from the beginning with the implementation of the new teacher evaluation system, there are hard and fast deadlines by which we need to have certain things in place. Um, I think the only way we're going to meet those deadlines is to continue to work collaboratively with the teachers. Um, and I, I have to agree with, with Mr. Parent. When I see what deadlines we need to meet and what I, when I see <coughs> what it is that we've got to do with, um, with the teachers in order to get this system in place according to the, the statutory requirements we have, um, this is not the year to be given up those, those early release hours. Every, virtually seven of those early release days are, are already locked in for doing some of this, some of this work um, for reform. So, uh, so I, 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 just, I have to agree that, that you know, it might be some conversation for another year, but not this year. I, I, I'd just like to reiterate that I, I am not in favor of getting rid of staff development abandoning a teacher evaluation process at all. I'm simply stating a clear fact that is we are trying to squeeze more hours out of our teachers that, that, that we've all, they've already given up, give, given us a lot of time. I mean they need another three days of staff development in their contract and being compensated. You can't make more time. You can't. You know, I mean, we, we, I, I, believe me, I see how creative you have gotten, and, and, I, and I truly appreciate the integrity of the program, because you've always been that way. But it, it, it just seems to me that we're, we're fighting this fuel effort that, that should be so difficult. Uh, I, I understand why it is difficult. I'm not discounting the reasons behind it. I'm not discounting the early release days. I'm just simply saying that the, the time's not there. I, I also had a question, um, and, and I, I think that it, it's a stipulation actually that I would make that I said earlier um, at another meeting, and that is if we assume everything is static, if we assume that the parameters that currently exist are the parameters in which we need to think, it's hard to squeeze anything out of anything. If we, and I, it's a very time-worn phrase, and I ran on this 10 years ago, if we get outside the box and can think creatively, there are, I think, a number of things we can do. And it's sort of in that spirit that I suggested, well, is a brown bag lunch seminar is possible as a way to recapture some of that time in high school. And the question that I have kind of also leads in that direction, Mike, and I just wonder, is it possible, and um, if it was possible, what kind of infrastructure would need to be in place to be able to capture some of the community service work that kids are doing, and whether that could count towards 990, and what would the infrastructure, what kind of supervision or seminar would need to be in place to capture that? Discuss that. Um, I, I have a, a group that's been working looking at the schedule. We haven't looked at the 990 piece per se, but there is a group of teachers who will actually have been looking at flex schedule as, as something we want to bring forward, um, starting with a program, this pilot program this summer. Uh, but there is a group of teachers that could take that on. I mean, the other option is, when you mentioned community service, I mean, you could say uh, for every student that's not meeting 990 for the study hall has to do 20 hours of community service. But you're right, there needs to be an infrastructure. That would have to be either a group of teachers who would have to be done through a almost there um, um, 
you have to have something in place. You have to have a number of teachers with, with if, if my numbers are correct and you've got, um, you know, 400 plus students that don't, or aren't quite at 990, you're giving them community service hours. Somebody has to track that, com compute that, keep that, and I know, you know, X2 can be a wonderful thing, but we have to develop something there. That would need time. We have to have a, a, a group of people to do that. I'm, I'm looking at that's not in the job description of anybody here at the high school. At this time, this would need to be developed over a period of months. I, I suggested so, I suggest something like that because because I've been part of the conversations that, that you and your team have had about the advisor advisee, mm -hmm. and it, it and it seems to me that if we can figure out a way to track that, track those hours, if we can make clear what the expectations are, that again you've got that 45 minutes over lunch where you can sit down because I, I I don't think you just send kids out to do community service without processing it, without talking about what they're experiencing and what they're learning from that and what they. You know, what they're learning about the community. Um, but you, could you use those 45 minutes to have those seminars where, on a month, right? I'm just, yeah. I'm looking to try to, to get outside of, of this really rigid framework that we're locked into to try to capture not just the time on learning, but I've always felt that that community service piece is just a critical civic piece that we should be uh, offering our kids and, and having expectations around. So, you know, I, I don't see this as much a crisis as it, as it is an opportunity if we can frame it that way. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor Bobby. Thank you. I just um, might want to be sure I understand what your recommendation is. Um, not to implement the change in the high school to the extra hour that they stay, or do that piece and then hold there until we evaluate other options and other things we can do. Uh, I think there's three nothing, which I don't think is, to me, is a viable option. One, you, you add time, preparatory time, before each exam next year, of a half hour each exam, which gives us, again, six and a half hours. Right. And if you look at the implementation of a two-hour high school or release through 12-17, which is the end of that much. Or, I mean, we could work it with 12. It may not be, I, mean, I, I have to look at the, the numbers on that, but you're roughly adding somewhere in the vicinity of six to six and three quarter hours. So you're, you're adding thir roughly 13 hours to anybody that isn't making 990 now. Remember, we've got you know 200 over 200 kids who are at 1,047, even taking away the early release dates. So it's not like there isn't anybody in the building who needs 990. It's just that we've kind of got two groups, one group larger with, with the study hall, I think, and i got to go back again tomorrow to Judy and say, can we look at that more, more carefully? Did we miss some kids in that computation? So do we need more data at this point? From the, the school committee before we can make a decision here about what we're going to do. Do we need to get additional concrete information, or can we, I mean, I'm just asking how people feel today about where we go with this. Well, the, the, I mean, we get this early release sorry. component is, oh, I'm sorry, no, my mistake. It's okay. Uh, Mr. No, Cantor's had his hand up, but I don't know if it, it's going to answer the mayor's. So let him go. Never come to there, I'll, I'll let in. I just believe that the early release affects a lot more than just the high school. Um, I'm just trying to understand where we are um, right now. Um, and I have a comment to uh, Bruce's recommendation. Um, in terms of understanding where we are right now, as far as I understand it, Dr. Kerbel requested the additional time, and you believe it's likely that we'll get that additional time? Yes. Is that in any way, shape, or form tied to making a good faith effort starting immediately, i.e., going to two hours? 
rather than three hours. No. That's what we're doing. So until we know the answer to that, should we even be discussing this? We voted on the calendar. We have a calendar in place. So it was probably us to move the calendar. It was potentially the need to, to make some moves in terms of one day. Um, and it seems like that issue, at least for right now, might be able to might be able to buy the time to hold it in abeyance and do the data gathering we need to get the information that we need to do to make sure that what we're doing is right not only to our students but also to our faculty and uh, uh, come up with something that, uh, that makes sense. So uh, I just don't know where this discussion is taking us to tonight. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you know, the, the other vote is Thursday versus Friday piece of it. And if that's something we need to vote on, I'd like to have at least some discussion is what changed from the time that we voted to make it Friday such that we need to reconsider that now. But I'm just trying to get that. And very quickly, the comment that I have on, on Bruce and to Mike, I think the structure in terms of making that community service um, work in terms of the, the uh, reflections, the kind of uh, giving it the academic rigor that we, we hope to give it, that infrastructure basically exists. It's the stuff that Cheryl Zeno has done, I think, very effectively in developing the internship program. It can be very easily uh, adapted for community service. The tracking of the hours and everything else, that's a whole other bailiwick, and uh, we do need to address that. And then, you know, I can I just say one more thing? You know, I, I've only run the idea of the half hour preparatory time to my leadership team back in December and, and January. I have not broached the subject of the, you know, except what appeared in the newspaper about going from three hours to two hours of high school for early release days. That's not even a conversation that I've been able to have, you know, with my staff. And again, the only conversation I've had with, with any group in, at the high school has been with my department heads and administrators about the looking at the exam time and adding some hours there. That was met with, you know, that sounds like a, like a good idea. It could benefit the students to prep for a half hour before they take the exam. We looked at what the day would look like today. Would we give the students a half hour in between each exam period? What taking that half hour, what would that look like? Is, is that in the student's best interest, the teacher's best interest? So, you know, we kind of mapped out what, what the day for exams would, 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 would look like. And, and that's different than what we're used to. Right? You know, that's something that hasn't been, you know, given to, to the, you know, the rank and file in the high school as far as the teachers. And I'm talking about it here, but I haven't had a conversation with them about that. I have a, I have a faculty meeting later in May that I've been talking about it, but really I haven't talked to them directly about pretty much any of this. Audrey, uh, did you have a question? Uh, or is it? <laughs> I do have a question. I, it's much like um, Nick's. Are we grouping this all together tonight? Because then I have something to say. Or if we're dividing the 990 from the calendar, I'll, I'll leave the 990 to the professionals to figure out. Cause I, so I guess I just want to make sure before we go to vote that there's some clarification on that. Uh, Madam Chairman, I, I, I would uh, move to table uh, the issue of 990 until such time as we have information to the state's response to Dr. Purple's request and uh, give Principal Parent a chance to meet with his leadership team and his faculty to come to us with a more solid recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Um, <coughs> just a question. Are you suggesting then that we don't vote on any calendar change until we have that information or that we separate? The 990 part portion of it only was. I guess what I'm trying to do is separate the 990 from, from the Thursday, Friday, and I don't believe we have the information right now uh, with which to make any kind of decision or take any kind of vote on 990. So. But that was the only reason that we, we brought up 
of we vote of the or can we look at the calendar was because of 990. That's right. And the civil rights. Um, That's correct. And so therefore, I would like to hear if we were yeah. to separate them and take a look at the other. If we're to take a look at the Thursday versus Friday issue, uh, if we need to readdress the calendar on that basis, forgetting the Monday or whether the, the students stay early, come late, or do whatever they're doing, forgetting that, just now a switch of days, uh, I would like to hear the superintendent's rationale for bringing it before the school committee and uh, support for that for that uh, recommendation if that in fact is his recommendation. I think so. I think that makes it easy for um, just for clarity, um, the school committee was the body that asked the superintendent to reopen discussion about the calendar. Damn. We thought there was going to be a net gain and a delayed over, and I think we've discovered that there is not. Correct? also discovered there, there's a lot of hardships put on people in the community with the delayed over. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Brandt, would you like to join us or do you have a comment? I just wanted to offer a piece of information that might help in your decision and it was prior to Nick making his motion, um, which may help with your vote for the motion. The next step in the coordinated program review process, once you receive your final report, which we just received April 17th with this citation, is that the department sends out somebody to work with us <coughs> through technical assistance on a corrective action plan. So a lot of the questions that you have and the answers that we don't have will most likely either be answered or worked on with our technical assistance representative from the department. We're awaiting that date. It has not been scheduled yet, but I can try to accelerate that in an effort to move this conversation and decisions further along. But it might be helpful to meet with the department who works with other districts on trying to meet this civil rights violation because ultimately it does, right now, it has to be corrected by April 17th of 2013. If we get the extension, we'll have a little bit longer. Um, but, but ultimately, we have to submit a corrective action plan that has to get voted and approved before we can begin to work on it. So it might be helpful to have that technical assistance appointment um, to bring you more information. Any further, um, Dr. I just want to um, answer Dan's comments. Mm -hmm. If the principal of a high school will like a delayed opening, I don't want you to feel like he, he does not. He will like a delayed opening. In terms, in terms of the um, the net gain, it's the same thing as if students stay longer and have lunch. Okay, so Mike would love to have a delayed opening. motion on the table is to talk about 90, 990. Part of that 990 in regards to achieving the hours that the principal is speaking about in total of 13 include dismissal at the high school of 1217, not 12. So do you consider that part of the 990 conversation or part of the calendar? Because you have early release days identified on your calendar. So if you voted your 990 to include that discussion and made a motion in regards to Thursday and Friday with dismissal of the high school to possibly change, that would cover you from that perspective. I think that's, that's understood. I mean, that affects 990 that we put into effect. That would have us doing something at the high school differently than what we have been doing up to this point. Uh, in response to my menu, would be tabled anything that is regarding about whether it's appropriate to do the professional development days on Thursday or Friday. I still leave open for discussion, but if we may decide not to discuss that as well. Okay, on the last piece I'll throw out, the additional 20 minutes would be at a cost as opposed to at 12 o'clock being no cost, but that cost would be somewhat minimal as it would be in scenario number 
And, and I only feel up to 1217 because that, that's what happens normally. We, we can set up a, a lunch schedule to meet mm -hmm. any, you know, we, we can take, you know, Bruce's idea about a, a working lunch, so to speak, on those days and, and run with that and get a sense of what that might look like. Uh, I, I want to go back to, I want to go back when Nick was talking about we, we have a calendar that has a release date on Fridays. Mm -hmm. And so, whatever, if, so if parents are watching this or if teachers are watching this, they can say, well, the, the same conversation can be about Friday. But it's, it's on the table. There's a movement from Friday to Thursday. And uh, we should talk about it. Can I, may I just clarify one thing before we go there? We, all, we have three calendars in front of us. Um, have we definitively decided that we are not going to do a delayed opening for the 2012-2013 school year? Yes. Yes? Is that a recommendation from the superintendent? No. I'm not recommending, I'm not recommending a delayed opening. Okay, so any calendars that have a late opening, we can put over. Do we all agree? Yes. Yes. So right now, in your packet, you're looking at draft four and draft three. So we're back to the question. Draft four has early release days on Fridays. Are, are, are we voting on the uh, oh, you motion are, today? I'm sorry. Um, there's a motion to table the discussion of 990 until we get more information and take it out of the conversation about the calendar. Do I hear a second? All in favor? So we uh, uh, did discussion. We did that. Okay, go ahead. So there's no need some further discussion. All right. Uh, just about the 1217 uh, time on the lunch. Uh, again, uh, Mr. Parent, is that something that you uh, have or had not broached with uh, the teachers at this point? No, so, I, I, I have not broached the additional hour of instructional time and the lessening of the hour of early release time. But as far as the actual time frame of the day, I have not okay. had a conversation. I mean, that was, I mean, we've been floating ideas around for the last several days. Right. What what could work, what might work, what's what works easiest. But again, yeah. a lunch schedule is not my right. my main concern. We can come up with a lunch schedule to meet any. Well, you, you, there, there may be the Department of Elementary and Secondary of Education nutritional guidelines regarding the requirements mm -hmm. to offer lunches at a high school. Yeah. during a, a, an academic school day. So there may not be a avenue for us to change A, the format, B, the time, C, the actual meals being served, or if we reduce lunch population, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, so that's another piece that we need to kind of fold into the conversation. The 12, the 12, the 12 17 time tidy stays up at the high school because it also gives our teachers their half hour contractual lunch. That they normally have the normal school ball. If we go to 12, I've got to get the teachers 12 to 12.30 for lunch. And I've got to come up with a lunch schedule for kids. Teachers have to have lunch at the same time because, I, I mean, it would create a problem sort of for me scheduling that at the high school. The 12.17 time, and I don't know what that does numbers-wise, these are running, you know, the dollars and, 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 and cents. That kind of takes care of two things at once. It takes care of the students, but it also takes care of the teachers having their lunch so they can go right into their early release professional development. Okay. Any further discussion? I, 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 um, yeah, I just want to make sure that we know <coughs> what we're actually voting here. What we're voting is to set aside any conversation of 990 from this calendar conversation. And that we may, uh, if there is any requirement that we have to um, 
to respond as a school committee to suggestions made to expand the school year, that that comes back to us Absolutely. in another format. Absolutely. And no, I'm to, all I'm doing is saying, I'm not, I'm not uh, asking to vote it down. I say, we don't have the information to take any kind of reasonable vote on it right now. Uh, let's say, what those are things we do. Any further discussion? Just yeah. for a point of clarification, so if we vote for an early release date, we don't have to, we're not voting on an early release time. If we vote on a calendar, approve a calendar, it could still be 12 or 27. I just wanted to make sure you pointed that out because that is not one of the scenarios that has previously been presented to you. Correct. So? The 12 17. 12 17. On that grid that I did, scenario right. one, two, right. three, or four, this would right. be fine. Sorry, but well, we're not close to that. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Send me the bill. <laughs> Any further discussion? Everybody to take a vote? We're all just those, taking a vote on next motion. That's all the Nick, would you restate your motion so that we get it correct? I uh, made a motion to table discussion of any variance in Schedule 2 in order to achieve May 90 until such time as the superintendent has an opportunity to receive a response from the state and uh, Principal Parent has had a chance to meet his team, his leadership team, his faculty. Uh, and come to us with any recommendation on how to address it. Nick, would you be willing to write that out? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked him to repeat it, because I thought he'd been... <laughs> Did he catch that, Julie? <laughs> well, I thought it was escalated and said, but move to table the discussion 990 until we have more data, but do you want me to say all that, that other stuff, too? That no, that's okay. fine. How about if we just embed the video? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Table carries. Now we're back to looking. No, we're not. No, no, no. Oh, I have a question. Well, <laughs> the mayor's not feeling well. I think she wants to go. Well, my, no. go ahead. my question then is that my understanding was it was the 990 issues in the civil rights report that drove us to reopen this issue. So then why? Are we, if we move that out of this conversation, then why are we going back to look at the vote? Ms. McCarthy? I might be able to answer some of those points. I know that following the initial vote on the calendar, I was reluctant, I voted for it, and immediately had some regret. After that, I have received many phone calls, conversations with people that I think did not look at the whole picture and realize the ramifications. And it nagged at me and convinced me that maybe I should speak up about the calendar that we had voted in. Um, that being said, um, I continue to, to receive emails and phone calls from people who are concerned that the 610 votes for Fridays represents, although it represents a large number, 610, does not represent um, people that are looking at our school system as a whole. And that's what keeps coming back is that the people that voted for this look at the system as a whole, the high school, the middle school, the kids who need childcare, the kids who don't need childcare, the kids who can go downtown, the kids who can't go downtown, and did we look at it as a whole? Uh, I didn't know how I felt about that, but in receiving the, all of the emails that we received, I am more convinced that there's a pocket of, of people that, that did not look at the whole system and our school system altogether. Um, one of the figures thrown out was that it affects 4,000 parents if we have any sort of release on Thursday. And you know, I'm not sure where that comes from because then I hear Dr. Kerbel say that he got feedback from people that were saying they depend on their older kids to take care of their younger kids. So I'm not really sure where the 4,000 um, comes in. But what concerned me additionally is when I sat here and listened to Mr. Parent's concerns about Friday release days, and it made me think, why did we ever think about switching to Fridays? Um, Thursday provides the added structure at the end of the week, and I wasn't 
part of the school committee, maybe when all of this started, um, but I wasn't sure why we had ever entertained Fridays. Um, then I was considering that risky behavior survey, and a lot of work, analysis, and time had gone into that, and that coupled with what Mr. Parent said made me want to, and I only speak for myself, but made me want to relook at our calendar. And then I know that there's a group of parents that have contacted me and said, it's only a year, give it a try. And I think back to how significant a year can be for a student who maybe has unstructured time, and we, we raise our kids on structured time because we want to keep them busy and out of trouble. And it doesn't really change the older they get, the activities change. Um, but it is a significant year. And I go back to a student who made a poor decision, a high school student, last year, the year before last, that totally impacted his future. He was not going to college, he was going into service, made a poor decision on an early release day, and it impacted all of that. So although it may be a year to some of us, it's very significant if we have kids that have the opportunity, and we can't micromanage them, but we can certainly provide the most structure that we can, and, and realize that a year could be very significant for one child who makes a, a, just a, a, a bad decision. And um, so I don't know if that, that, I'm speaking for myself, but that is why I, was already wrestling with this, and then Mr. Parent just caused me to wrestle with it even more. And I feel like I would like the feedback of the principals. I'd like the feedback of the administration. I'd like feedback from other schools on when they have their early release days, and why do they have them on those days, and did they ever try Fridays, and did Fridays not work? And, and to not just put this risky behavior survey on a shelf to collect dust, and to not use it the best way we can immediately. So those are all my points. Um, I, I can answer some of your questions, and then I have a question for Mark that follows up on, on one that, that you asked. Um, there was a lot of discussion about changing to Friday uh, from Thursday, um, and in the end, there was a group of four people, and uh, you know, I expressed, as I did when we took the vote, that I was not, I did not think changing to Friday was. And it did not set well with me either, but we passed this calendar. And, and it occurs to me now, and this is a question that's following up on the one that you asked, that we, we did a survey of parents, um, but I never asked the question at the meeting of what feedback would we get from the principals, and was there any feedback from the principals? And it occurs to me that, you know, I, I was, I never asked that question, and that should have been a fundamental question that the group considered and that we asked. And we did not ask that question. I certainly didn't. Um, and I don't believe that, I can't recall any anecdotal information that I got as to what the principals thought about that. So taking your question, I directed to Dr. Kerbal, and I wonder if there is any, any feedback, any way to characterize feedback you've had from the principals with regard to I think the principals support um, our own to be on Thursdays. It just I, I I have a different set of eyes on a lot of things. I'm not saying that I'm right. Because you can ask my wife. She would say, yeah, sometimes you're not. Um, there's if you if I'll I'll, I'll I'll be very very clear. If you, if you have expectations, people will live up to them. If you don't have expectations, people will not. Okay? So I, I have expectations that students will come to school on Fridays. I have expectation that there will be rigor and great teaching on Fridays. And that for families, and, and I've received a number of emails, as you have, but I've received quite a bit of emails from parents that say, I have a better opportunity of leaving work and getting home on Friday than trying to leave work on a Thursday middle of the week, trying to find some type of um, daycare for uh, some type of someone to be home to take care of my son or daughter. 
on in the middle on a Thursday. One of the things that, um, if you look at the calendar, if you move an early release date to the end of the week, you don't have a week that's broken up. Okay, and so I don't buy into people are tired. I, I just don't buy that because if you're working, you're working. If you're with students um, or not with students. Okay, you're not tired by the end of the week. Okay, we're all tired, but people work hard. Regardless, um, so I'm going to say they work hard the Friday before the release and the Friday after the release, and they work hard on the Thursday before the release and the Thursday after the release day, and they work hard on the release days. So it's just your expectation. Um, I'm not hearing exactly why Friday, except from my parents. The principal of high school was worried that kids would start their um, weekend early. That's a different problem. Okay? And so, you think we're solving the problem by not having a release day on a Friday? We're not. Okay? So, if you feel that students are more apt to have substance abuse um, when they get a head start on the weekend, okay, we have other problems that we have to deal with. One of the things that I understand about the risky behavior. I'm concerned about that. I was there the night that they, um, they rolled it up. Um, sorry, just lost. I went off, lost my thought. Train thought. I'll come back to me in a second. Um, sorry, I lost it. Sorry. Nice I'm gonna make a point, and I lost. I, I just like to make a point from 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 where I stand. <clears throat> This kind of reminds me, you know, if you want to do a survey, you're going to be careful what you ask for. You better be able to deal with the results that come in on the survey. We, we, we did a survey. I, I, as well, I see issues with Friday, as Mr. Parrott does, same type of issues. I do not concern myself so much with, uh, I, I agree with Dr. Carroll, you set expectations that, that, you know, rigor is going to happen on Friday. It, you know, it will. But, I mean, we, we as, a, as a committee, we beg for community involvement. We, we are constantly trying to enlist the, the, the community um, and, and, and get their feedback. I mean, we have an overwhelming response to projects. And I, I cannot discount that, um, even if it even if I have a little bit of trouble with it, I, I, I can't discount that. So if there was going to be a vote on a Thursday or a Friday, because of that, because of the fact that we took a survey, and the results of the survey are what they are, I, I would vote to keep it on Friday the next year. Dr. Portal, did you have discussions with the principals? Is it appropriate for you to share any of their reasoning? as to why they prefer Thursday over Friday? Um, you know, I'll, say, I'll say a few things, but certainly Angela and David are at the same meetings, and so you may want to capture the sentiment better than me. Um, Thursday's been working. We've been doing Thursday, Thursday's been working, everybody has a schedule. Um, and one thing I want to let the school committee know, I'm not, I don't want to position the school committee. That's why on the recommendation, it says Friday or Thursday. So I don't feel, you, you have to vote what you think makes sense. I know you want to support me, and you, and you do. You support me uh, a lot when I ask you to vote on something. But this is not about supporting me and not supporting me. This is about you have to vote what you think makes sense. Um, the, the principals like Thursday because it's been working. Um, I would say, I know how my, um, my parent feels, okay, um, I'll, I'll defer to Angela if you want to just you know, add the sentiments that I'm missing from the first well, I know I'm missing something, but I'm not saying One thing I would add is that um, Mr. Hoppe was asking about the Thursday and Friday. I think what Dr. Purple said is true. If you establish a routine 
your, your teen is successful, our attendance is good on those days, both for students and teachers. Um, there's a good momentum with it going. Why? You know, why are we, why would we make the change when there are also concerns attached? So that good momentum, things are going well, the teams are established, and there are some concerns for our students around making the change. I think the comments that I recall, I think we were at the middle school conference room in, in, in Barry's office, and I think the comments that, that Barry had, had raised were what Andrew has said, but also that the not middle school, and I'm, I'm trying to recall what Barry had said, and I'm trying not to, to, to paraphrase in any manner, shape, or form. His concerns were that the subgroup regarding AYP in regards to attendance, he had just gotten off of. After being on it for two years, he had just gotten off of it. So he was concerned that attendance would suffer at the middle school and jeopardize making AYP regarding that. I think that that was something that, that he kind of mentioned. Um, I, I think that, that Amy Sullivan kind of talked a little bit about the subgroups and concerns about subgroups regarding the meeting in AYP, and I think that that was a conversation that all principals had out of concerns for attendance, special education, and other low income, and those kinds of subgroups. Uh, thinking, th their thinking, if, if, if I can speak you know, for them and, and for the conversation, was that attendance was going to rise. Um, Absentee. Thank you very much. I was trying to figure out how to put that. Absentee <laughs> was going to rise and what negative effect it might have on either subgroups, AYP, and or instruction in classrooms where absenteeism was at a higher percentage rate. I, I, I think that that's what I, that I would call here. Okay, I think we should vote. Motion to approve a Thursday early release day. Second. Do I have to say discussion? <laughs> discussion? I just, uh, again, I regret um, not having had the feedback, not having had the, the wisdom to ask for feedback from the principals when we the meeting as a group. I'd just like to add that back on January 26th, I uh, offered some concerns, largely from the standpoint that uh, Louise Thompson, who's a professional that's provided training for the school district, and a number of school districts, probably in Massachusetts and New England, uh, does not do trainings on either Mondays or Fridays. Uh, having said that, uh, and hearing about a lot of the other variables tonight to include the importance of executing a new teacher evaluation uh, rollout of that criteria, uh, as well as uh, perhaps my most important uh, goal, I guess, as a school committee member, and I think it's something we all share here, it's really about improved or overall improved student achievement. Uh, when we first started these release days several years ago, we were really focusing on strengthening the curriculum and essentially uh, making sure that uh, each, each grade teacher was as good as the next and really doing some collaboration uh, this continued work on curriculum mapping, uh, things like that. So, and, but, and, and we've talked a little bit about data tonight, but there's still the overall skill, the overall apprenticeship, if you will, of teaching that really piles up year after year based on good mentoring, based on solid classroom experience. Uh, similar to what Ms. McCarthy said earlier, it's really about taking a look at what's most important to the school district as a whole. And I've always kind of made this promise to myself that uh, when I'm at odds as to what I'm going to vote on, it's really going to be based on what's best for overall student achievement. And uh, having said that, I think the best thing for overall student achievement is to uh, continue early release days on Thursdays. So that's how I'll be voting. All of the, all those in favor of a Thursday release day calendar? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Um, MSBA update, a, a few things uh, for your information this evening. On May 15th, there is a city forum uh, at 7 o'clock at City Hall Auditorium. 
Uh, and that will be a presentation to the community on all three building projects. Uh, a lot of good information. We're going to have different tables all set up for uh, a half an hour so people can walk through and get some information on each project. They can get in information on taxes, in in information on budgets and things like that. And then there will be about an hour long presentation and Q&A. So again, that's May 15th at 7 o'clock at City Hall Auditorium. Uh, and we're looking for a large turnout and some very good conversation and sharing of some, some very good information. On May 23rd, uh, we're going to the MSBA for the Knock Molin uh, Feasibility Assessment Subcommittee meeting. Uh, that is a similar meeting for Knock Molin that we went for and uh, it went there in for Bresenhan, excuse me. Um, and so we look forward to understanding any um, concerns that MSBA might have with our submittal. So that is the uh, 23rd of May. Um, additionally, for you this evening, we've put together, and I shouldn't say we, Steve Berghome, just extraordinary at what Steve does. Uh, we had a school building committee meeting last Wednesday evening. Uh, we were talking about existing condition videos uh, that had um, been on one website, maybe not on the other, but what could we do to make two, make two consistent. So uh, Steve finished that up this weekend. I'd like to show you Knock Molin, and then I'd like to show you Bresnahan. Uh, Nick uh, has put those uh, on the website. He'll be putting Bresnahan on the website. I've also got them on my laptop, so when I do coffees, depending on what people are looking for as far as information, <laughs> I can also bring it up on my laptop, and a lot of the people that are doing the coffees also have them on their laptop.
reverential settlement. There's water infiltration outside the border. focus of the architectural engineering, structural engineering, and the various mechanical uh, engineering aspects that we've put together, the educational program specifications for the building. Um, and again, that's going to be on the website. Uh, it'll be on the school district's website as well. And YouTube. satellite 
right from the knock mola to the breast of ham because we can't really cook in the kitchen. This walk in, it hasn't worked in quite a number of years. These windows, I think, are worse than the knock mola windows. They're, they're, they're paper fit, uh, thin, and it lose a lot of uh, uh, heat, uh, very energy inefficient. And you're losing a lot of heat that's rising out of the gym area as well. talked a, a lot about um, revenue and revenue that would cons 
um, consistently continue to come in, including school choice revenue and circuit breaker revenue. And those are some June 30th revenues that we really keep our eye on to make sure that we meet those revenue expectations uh, on June 30th. There's not too much wiggle room you have on June 30th at 4 o'clock when you receive a wire that's not doesn't meet your, your revenue forecast. Um, I think all in all, it was a very good conversation. We met for about an hour and a half, reviewed it from about a bunch of different perspectives. There were a couple questions uh, from the committee uh, regarding the fuel line items, which I will report back to the committee at our next subcommittee meeting, which is May 18th on Friday at 8.30. I think that's so. Yeah, I mean, we spent a lot of time looking at, uh, you know, where there were encumbered expenses and where there was still, you know, available money left in the budget. Uh, folks brought a lot of questions. Uh, to the process, and those will be uh, followed up on on the 18th. It's really, and I've said this to the finance subcommittee, I'm, I'm really very glad that this committee is back together. This was the first quarterly report that we've submitted as a committee that we really went through line item by line item by line item, and I think we spent a good hour and a half on the actual report going through it because we're revisiting it for the first time in a little bit, so. Sorry, Ted? Uh, Mr. Ganter, communications. Uh, communications committee uh, is scheduled to meet before the next school committee meeting, um, but we have been working diligently on a number of uh, projects. Uh, the key priority for us right now is to figure out how we can uh, revamp the website over some of the the district website, um, which needs uh, a lot of work to do in terms of reorganizing the website and some design work as well. Uh, on websites, we just mentioned the two websites that we have put up for uh, supporting the, uh, both the Bresnahan and the uh, Not Mullen projects. Um, I would also report that we are working very closely with the mayor and the school building committee uh, and uh, report pride group to uh, help get the word out and just educate the public about the nature of these projects. Uh, most of the school committee attended uh, a uh, session for a, a sample copy so that they know how to do it themselves. And uh, at this point, uh, uh, Ms. Sweeney has a, done a couple of events, and Mr. Menon is doing one tomorrow. I've done a couple of your courses to, uh, on demand also, and uh, Dan was at the meeting as well. Anybody who wasn't able to figure out what we need from you, uh, please speak to me and I'll be happy to give you a refresher course real quick uh, so that we can uh, count on you. Uh, we've got, uh, at this point, over 40 informational copies on the schedule. We are also conducting tours of the Bresnahan and of the Black Mullen facilities. Uh, we're trying to conduct the tours in conjunction with uh, events that are happening in the schools anyhow. So if there's a concert at the school, we'll have tours uh, available at that point. Uh, on the Port Pride website, which is uh, Port Pride uh, 01950, www.portpride 01950, there is a calendar of all the tours and coffees. So I encourage anybody who is interested in learning more about these projects and uh, uh, Please attend either of these informational events. Uh, all of those events are on, on schedule on, on a calendar on that site. Um, and finally, uh, on that front, we have informational tables at a lot of events. Uh, we had uh, with the uh, spring uh, was it, uh, spring run. Five, five, the 5K. 5 fever, fever 5. The spring fever. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, we probably had about 40 or 50 people come by and, and look at the plans and ask questions. We also had a much smaller number actually take a tour of the, of the school. Uh, but there is interest. We, we had a tour tied to a PTO meeting that we did have uh, a significant number of people actually go through the schools. Uh, the same day as to come through the rest of the high school. Uh, we also had tours of the North Bowl and uh, Mary Hopping is most for the most part. Uh, so a lot of support from the schools. Thank you uh, to from school administrators to help us get the word out about uh, why these projects are so important. Thank you. 
Um, NEF update, um, I was unable to attend the meeting that um, was had last week. Do you have anything to say about that, Dr. Kirk? Mm -hmm. Because um, you did, but we, we saw it in. <laughs> There was a speaker that was that talked about a new way of fundraising. I was at the building committee, so I missed uh, the formal presentation. However, the um, I will say that in terms of its fundraising efforts, will um, is going will adapt, and make some changes. Thank you, um, Superintendent's report. Um, thank you. Number 10. <laughs> I want to congratulate Spencer Wolf and the students for their second place win at the 35th annual uh, Dutchess Theater Fest at Mount Holyoke College. Um, the students in the Advanced German wrote and produced their own play, Scooby Dooby Doo. And in German, I can't say. I was going to say, keep going. You've got um, Bruce and. Uh, Wins and die shirts. Oh, Scooby Dooby Doo, <laughs> where are the shoes? <laughs> uh, students in the advanced German are, and you're going to recognize some of the people, Ryan Campbell, Alexis Cole, Julie Manning, Nia Mance, and also there are other students within the uh, German program that act out the plays, um, Alex Bradley, Matt Caswell, Linda, Lindsay Ford, Alan Estes, Nikki Gaylor, Rebecca Kuzma, Rebecca Maru, Maru Mary True, Jessica, Jesse Alig and Max Five. Also, congratulations to Alan Estes, who was a runner-up and was awarded five hundred dollars April twenty-second in the Stories Live Slam. So, I want to thank the teachers, um, Steve Melifan, Tom Abrams, for um, working with students. Also, just want to uh, say something positive, very something very positive about. Uh, Debbie Zabo, Zabo and her work with all of the students uh, who are involved in poetry, poetry slam contests. Happened to catch at the festival, literacy literary festival, so last week. And so, if you haven't seen a poetry slam, or, or if, you, if you haven't seen a poetry slam contest, it is really something. And, uh, some reason I've caught the bug. I think our students are so talented. And some of these kids tell a story, whether it's just stories alive, or a story within poetry form or rap form. They just are so amazing. So I want to say a couple of things about our elementary program. There's moving up day that's happening. Uh, MCAS is happening in the district. Um, old school just had their science fair. And um, we have Brown schools very involved in place-based education, having visits by uh, the Audubon Society. And I think I've captured everything except one last thing. I want to mention that Ellen Menacelli received the NEF grant from uh, for uh, 24 e-readers. Try them out uh, with their storybook group that met. Um, Lisa Furlong and seven grade students and it went over exceptionally well. The native readers, the students, love the e-readers, and the adults uh, who are joining them are adjusting. <laughs> <laughs> Can't turn the page. And that's, uh, I, I want to thank Dean for all of her work and effort on the MSBA, okay, and giving up a lot of her time on uh, Saturdays and Sundays, uh, talking to parents, Anyone else who's interested in our news, hopefully our news Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we go to the assistant superintendent's report, and it says to me here that Ms. Farrell reported out on the MSBA segment <coughs> and the subcommittee <coughs> finance segment. Do you have it uh, any further? I do not. I just have those two. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, assistant superintendent Angela Fick. Yes, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about um, our release day last Thursday when we rolled out the new evaluation system to the district. Uh, we had Dr. Brenier here from Teachers 21, and um, she helped us uh, 
take this first step in rolling out the system. Uh, she did uh, summer for the entire staff. It was a two-hour presentation. And she focused on the five steps of the new evaluation system, uh, portions of the teacher's rubric that she um, worked very hard to try to make as interactive as possible in an auditorium setting, which we all know is really challenging. And then she did an introduction of writing SMART goals with our teachers. Um, each of the teachers were given a binder that um, contained information that worked as an extension of the presentation that was made um, that afternoon. Um, we had got we had teacher feedback forms at the end of the day. Um, I think the teacher feedback was generally positive. Um, you know, we're in really early stages. This was a basic orientation that we provided on last Thursday. And uh, as you know, we have a subcommittee for the evaluation um, for the new evaluation system that's made up of teachers, administrators, and school committee members. And um, we're going to continue to work together to support the staff through every phase of the implementation. Um, some of the things that we're already uh, discussing are additional professional development and clear timelines for each portion of the rollout and um, what kind of support is needed with each of those, uh, each, each each segment. So really trying to um, build a culture of collaboration, that we're all in this together, and, um, and we're all going to learn together through the implementation process, and uh, we really want to build a community that's based on trust so that this evaluation system, this new evaluation system, can be done well and really will be about continuous growth for all of us. I think we're fortunate. We're off to a great start. I want to thank Pat Levitt, who's the uh, union president, uh, because she's modeling interest based bargaining. What's the, what's the best interest of the district? And, uh, and the teachers who are trying to do the same. We're all trying to work together. And I think the uh, teachers are, are um, they're doing, not, not just doing their part, but they're working on even subcommittees, going back to the full committee, and so that so we can move forward. So I uh, just want to thank all the teachers, as well as Bruce and Cheryl for being on the committee. This is, this is going to be a long-term project. It's going to be a long He's yeah. telling you something. So you, you, have, this, you, have, you have been assigned to the committee. <laughs> this is like long range planning. Long -range planning. It never ends. Right. Mr. Uh, Minnick. I would just like to add to that as well. Um, it's, a, it's a significant initiative that we're doing here. Um, uh, and I've, I've said this before that uh, our, our initial decision to accept race to the top money obligated us into this system of evaluation and I, I recall voting to oppose us taking the money because I did not think, I did not believe that I, that the state would be able to come up with a system that was significant um, and meaningful uh, and coherent enough to really evaluate teachers and engage them in the evaluation. Um, I, I have to say at this point that I, I was wrong about that. Um, this system really does seem um, very, very significant um, and very, very constructive um, in helping teachers evaluate themselves and identify their own goals. Um, and three things that I would say to finish uh, my comments about today, about that, that meeting um, was that, um, with, the, with the reasoning that we had, was that um, one of the overwhelming issues that teachers expressed in this implementation was having the time to do it right. If we want to do this right, it is going to take time, training, professional development. Um, the second point I think that was made, I don't remember if it was made by Dr. Kerber or somebody else, but it sort of became the mantra was that what we're looking for is progress, not perfection. That we understand this is an implementation, we understand that 
you know, we're, it's, it's going to take a lot to do this, and we really are, are each time we're looking for progress. And the other thing that I thought was really interesting is that we're trying to integrate this with the evaluation system we currently have, where people are evaluated on, on cycles every other year. Um, and one of the principals who was in attendance reported out that um, four teachers have already approached and, and asked if they could, whether they're on cycle or not for evaluation, whether they could be in the first group of, uh, of, of people who are going to use this evaluation system, um, which, I, which I think speaks a lot for the school, it speaks a lot for the teachers, um, and I think it speaks a lot for the sort of the underlying trust that we built that this, that we're all in this together. So I want to make those points. One final comment and I'll this all stuff. Yes. Um, Next week is Teacher Appreciation Week, and uh, so I know we all appreciate our teachers and appreciate all the work that they do. Um, this, week. Uh, this week, sorry, this week, and tomorrow is Teacher Teacher Appreciation Day. Thank you. And I'm glad you mentioned that because Thursday, <laughs> Oregano's is is hosting all of our teachers and, and uh, for Teacher Appreciation um, Week and. Providing exercises for our staff. So they've got a personal input. Thank you. Do we have any executive session? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.